This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. As far as our announcements, uh, first one here is that the uh, nursery is available for all newborns to the age of three. Also, I have a note here that, uh, first of all, uh, it's good to see the Keppels here today. And uh, this announcement says that there's a, a mailbox that has been set up in the back for them so that uh, if you care to give a uh, card, uh, that's available for you at back there. The only other reports here, the uh, Bible class for Wednesday evening, it will not be in person, it will be uh, online. So there will not be uh, in-person Bible class on Wednesday evening. And uh, we are also asking, no, new announcement here, we are asking for volunteers to decorate the church for Christmas and to take it down, of course, after. Uh, we need four to six people, one to climb a ladder. I can't climb the ladder when my kids are watching, so I... <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, contact Mary Oline or Elner Martinson uh, if you ha have that. I've been made aware, and it's, there's uh, information detail uh, about a community Thanksgiving dinner that's at the Alliance Church uh, on Thursday. And so uh, you can refer to that if uh, you know someone that uh, maybe doesn't have a place to go or needs a meal. Uh, this is available as a community service at the uh, Alliance Church, and that will be from 12 to 2 on November 24th. Today, uh, I want to make you aware, first of all, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Jeff is not here today. He's been battling the flu since midweek, so uh, we're in we're in charge here, and uh, we will have after uh, a while here. We'll have the Gideon uh, Marlon Wahlberg is going to speak, uh, and after the service, uh, Marlon will be standing in the back with an open Bible for contributions to the Gideons. Uh, if you're writing a check, the simplest is just to write it to the Gideons. If you write it to the church, we'll accumulate them and, and send them a check. As far as the other notices, uh, you can see they would be in the bulletin and, and you can review them there. Let us just open in prayer. Lord, we thank you. Today we have a national thanksgiving and yet we often forget in the hurriedness of the season to to stop and to thank you for all your blessings to us so as we come to this service we just ask that uh, your spirit will work amongst us encourage us and make us thankful people in jesus name amen that you uh, stand and join us in singing. Uh, we have three hymns of uh, uh, thankfulness that we're going to sing together. First one, Count Your Blessings. When upon life billows you are tempest hard When you are discouraged thinking all is Surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, take them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. with a load of care. Does that crossing heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings every doubt will find. And you will keep singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, save them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has 
Thanks to God. And uh, <coughs> some of you that know Swedish can sing it in Swedish if you know. Jim and I were comparing uh, notes on that. I knew one phrase, he knew one phrase, but that was about it. So, but thanks to God. Thank you. 
So God, for home and fireside, when we share our daily bread. Thanks for all of our sweet communion, and by thee our souls are fed. Thanks for grace in time of sorrow. singing this morning and this morning we'll call on Mar Marlon Wolder to come and uh, present the Gideon work to us. Good to be here today. Thank you for the wonderful worship time and the good songs. And it is a season to be thankful, isn't it? And we have so much to be thankful for. I'd like to start out with just a little humor. I heard about the pastor that came to town. He was new. He asked the boy, how do you get to the post office? The boy said, you just go down straight ahead two blocks. You turn one block to the right, and on the corner will be the post office. The pastor said, thank you, and then he said to the boy, I'm the new pastor in town. If you come to church on Sunday, I'll tell you how to get to heaven. The boy said, no thanks. You don't even know your way to the post office. <laughs> I have with me a Bible that I received back in the early 40s when I was in grade school. It's a Gideon Bible. At those days, we could get right into the schools the Gideons could and present the Bibles to the, and that's no longer possible. And so today, we use every means we can to get into the, to get Bibles in the youth. We go to the block party at the school. We go to the fairs. We just do everything we can to get Bibles into the hands of the youth. And so the most popular Bible that we print and we Gideons have been around, like I say, for many years, over 100 years. And our goal is to win men and women, boys and girls, to Jesus Christ. And we do this by printing the Bible in 100 languages. We place them in 200 countries. We've given out 400,000 to the people in our Ukraine. And today, we could print many more Bibles if we had the monies to do that. And so... Our plea today is, how can you get involved in the Gideons? You can pray, and by the way, our Gideon friend, Daryl Bronicky is in the hospital. He's the one that fell and is in a wheelchair. We can pray for your pastor today. He needs a little healing. And uh, prayer is powerful, and you and I all know that. And the Bible is B-I-B-L-E, and you know what it stands for, basic instruction before leaving earth, right? And so uh, we have a politician in Malacca this year that told me he received a Gideon Testament, and that's how he found the Lord. Uh, we had a pastor in the area that found the Lord through a Gideon Testament. We, uh, I heard of a pickpocket who, at the end of the day, when he went home and emptied out his, his goods that he received, and in there was a testament. And as he read that testament, it changed his life. That man today is serving God full-time ministry. And so the word of God has the life-changing message. It's up to speed. It's good for today. And it's why you and I are here today, aren't we? Because God's word has changed our life. And that's what church is all about, is, is not only hearing the word, but living the word and sharing the word. That's what we need to do. And there's a, there was a brochure on the back. If you didn't get one, please pick one up on your way out. Uh, the Gideon card rack, I see it's up to speed, and so if you, uh, that's another means of uh, the ministry of the Gideons, it's the second biggest income comes from the cards. We have phone cards, if you want to put the Bible on your phone, you can do that, and uh, I would like to share with you, I got this boat that's an illustration, it's a sailboat. You probably heard about the boy who made this sailboat, 
and he went out to sail it for the first time and the wind took it for him not to ever get it back again. A few weeks later as he went by the pawn shop in the window was that very boat he made. So he went into the pawn shop owner and said, you know, that's my boat. I made that. Pawn shop owner said, no, the price is $25. If you want it, you need to get $25 and you can have your boat. So the boy went home, he got $25 and he came in and paid the pawn shop owner for the boat. And as he walked out, he said, you know, you're twice mine. First I made you and now I bought you back. That's exactly what God did for you and I. He made us and he bought us back. And that's the message of the gospel. And that's what we're doing. We're putting the Bible out there so people can know who God is. And like I say, we have needs to get the Bible printed and place it. We put it in the hospitals. We give it to servicemen. We give it to the nurses. We give it to the nursing homes. We give it to the people in uniform, the policemen, the, the firemen and people in service of all kinds. We place it in offices so that the God's word is out there. And today in our country, we've done a poor job of allowing the Bible to get into the schools. And so you and I as parents and grandparents, we need to teach our kids what this is all about. And so today I wanna to thank you for letting us be here. We appreciate your church, we appreciate the spirit here, and we appreciate the fact that you support us because without you, we cannot do this job. And so I want to thank you for allowing us to be here. Um, and God is good and God is faithful, and we are blessed. And bless you, I pray, and thank you for allowing us to be here. And it's been our joy to be here. Thank you very much. We will be at the door like Jim said at the end of the service. Thank you. Thank you, Marlon. Appreciate that message. Really like the deal about the boat. He bought back, which is really what communion is all about and being thankful for um, what Christ did on the cross, you know, taking care of our sins, um, paying that price. And today we want to uh, commemorate that through communion service. So if I could have the um, men that are going to help us out, if they could come up to the front, that'd be great. In this time of Thanksgiving, <clears throat> thinking about th being thankful and the whole thought about being th uh, the Thanksgiving and that gratitude to what God has done for us. And in a, at times it's so easy to be thankful for when things are going great. You know, um, my job's going great and my family's going great. I, all this stuff is going so good. It's so easy to be thankful. But we have to remember that when we have times of of despair, we got problems. Maybe it's health problems. Maybe it's monetary things. Maybe it's our job. Um, we're kind of called to be thankful then as well. Uh, God has given us messages all the time and, and instruction throughout our life, and it's not always when it's good, but it's also when it's bad. So, in this whole realm of Thanksgiving, and, and, and Dick's going to have a, a wonderful pro proclamation. He's going to read here in a little bit from uh, President Lincoln in the midst of the Civil War where people are dying, and there's blood on the streets, and it's, uh, it's, it's awful. And, and President Lincoln has this amazing proclamation of thanksgiving in the midst of the Civil War. We're not in a Civil War, but obviously there's a lot of division in um, thinking about being thankful even when times are tough. Thinking about going back to a scripture then as well as um, think about the first time there was communion. And Jesus is there with his disciples, and he knows what's going to happen. He knows he's going to be flogged to the point of near death. He knows he's going to have to carry this enormous cross to a hill, and he knows he's going to be hung on that to die. Yet he is thankful. He was a man on earth, a God-man, and he, he begged God, say, do, you, do I really need to do this? And we know the story, yeah, you need to, because you're dying for the sins of my people. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and he, when he was given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, take this, this is my body.
And later on, then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, once again, thanks again, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood from the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I come, I drink in the new kingdom of God. Again, thanks. Thank you to Jesus for dying in his blood. His blood that saved us from our sins. Let's pray. Lord, we can't thank you enough for that ultimate gift of your life to save us from our sins. I'm so glad you bought us twice. You, you put us together and you bought us. And you bought us with your blood, your crucifixion, the perfect sacrifice. If there's anything to be thankful for, that's it. To know that someday we'll see you in heaven. Being thankful for your sacrifice, your ultimate sacrifice. So Lord, as we listen to this uh, proclamation that, that Dick's about to read, help us to be rem reminded of all the things you've done for us. And especially the giving up of your son for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thankful for water. <clears throat> I'm supposed to be say, saying something here and I got a dry throat, so. That's maybe from talking too much, I don't know. I'm gonna read Lincoln's proclamation for Thanksgiving, but I'm not gonna just read it through because I think if a person just reads this through and not comments on it, I think it'll just turn out to be a bunch of words, and a bunch of words without some meaning um, doesn't go very far. <clears throat> so, this proclamation was made on October 3rd, 1863 by the President of the United States, that's Abraham Lincoln. I'd like you to listen closely to what he has to say because I think uh, he hits a nail on the head in a lot of areas. So. The year that is drawing toward its close has been filled with blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added, which are of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften the heart, which is habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. Did you hear what he said there? He says that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. Isn't that true of us today? At least I, it is in my life. I think when things are going well, um, we forget who the blessings come from. And even when things aren't going well, there's blessings that are there, and I think we sometimes forget that even though we may have some tough times, that God is still good. And as Larry mentioned, this is in the midst of a civil war. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed to foreign states to invite and provoke their aggressions, Peace has been preserved with all nations. Order has been maintained. The laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere, except in a theater of military conflict, while that theater has been greatly contracted by the advancing armies and navies of the Union. 
So he's saying in the midst of a war, there's been some good things coming out of it. And I think as we go through struggles, I think we need to remember as well that there are some good things that come out of struggles. Um, I know I had mentioned when I lost my finger, I, yeah, I missed my finger, but boy, God taught me some things that I don't think I'd ever learned otherwise. He goes on to say, needful diversions of wealth and of strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The ax has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines as well of iron and coal as of the precious metals have yielded even more abundantly than here, heretofore. Population has steadily increased notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege, and the battlefield, and the country, rejoicing in the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor is permitted to expect continuance of years with large increase of freedom. So in the midst of everything that's going on, he's looking at positive things that have taken place. No human consul hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God who while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. Isn't that incredible? He's bringing out things that pertain to each of us today. The gracious gifts come from the Most High God. And I think about even where it says a continuance of years with large increase of freedom and the struggles they were having back then. Isn't that something? He goes on to say, It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessings, they do also with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged, and fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. That was a long paragraph, but there are so many good things that are in there. The one thing that I'm gonna bring out is, I know that in our country today, we might not have a bloody civil war, but there is a war going on for the heart and soul of people in our nation. We have two opposing world views. So there's a war going on. But I like that part where he says, to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes. There's a song that I've uh, come to appreciate just in the last few weeks. Uh, I can't remember who, else, who sings it, but it, it says, God is in this story and God is in my story. And what a, a beautiful place to be in with God's hand there in my story, in your story. And then he goes on to finish up, in testimony hereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed, done at the city of Washington this third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1863, and of the in independence of the United States, the 88th, Abraham Lincoln. You know, I've, I've heard this read many times before but I think if you hurriedly read through it 
at least in my case, you miss half of what he's trying to say. So I hope that was of help to you why we have Thanksgiving today. We have blessings in spite of problems because we all have issues and problems. And if you think you don't, I'd like to talk to you afterward, okay? I was going to read uh, a couple verses from, um, well, first of all, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. I'm sure many of you know that, uh, those two verses. It says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then I was going to read from uh, Psalm 147, and then I'm going to give you a chance to share what you're thankful for. It says, starting with verse 1 through verse 11, it says, Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the exiles of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our God and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. So with that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to share what you're thankful for this Thanksgiving season. So, with that in mind, if you raise your hand, I will bring you a mic and let you share. There's another song that I've, it's become uh, one that I like to listen to. It's by Jeremy Camp, calling Getting Started. I've known the Lord for many years, um, but sometimes I feel like I'm just getting started. It starts out for anyone who's ever lost your way, for everyone who's ever gone astray. Here's a song for the brokenhearted. And uh, I believe you're only getting started. Things happen in life. Not all of them are pleasant. Some of them are, and we maybe forget who brought that blessing, and some of them aren't. We receive blessings anyway through it. It says in that song as well, fall in his arms and he'll wash you clean. Isn't that precious? I guess that's what we can count on no matter if we have trials, whether we think we're receiving blessings or not. If we fall in his arms, he'll wash us clean. It might not be a blessing that we were looking for, but there are blessings there. We just need to fall in his arms. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, people have shared this morning many things that they are thankful for, blessings that come from you, whether it's to live in a country that's free, to be in a loving family, to provide food, and, and many, many more things that people are thankful for. Lord, we recognize we are sinful people, but you have provided a way for us. We're just getting started. I pray, Father, that you'd give each and every one of us a hunger to know you more and more because you are the one who brings peace. You're the one who brings contentment, joy, and the one who can help us to be thankful no matter what the circumstances are. When things don't go the way we had hoped they would go, you're still there, you're in control, and everything will fit into your divine purposes, Father. Give us boldness to share your truth and love that others might be able to experience the same hope, peace, and joy that you've given to us. Help us, Father, to 
Be joyful always to pray continually and be thankful in all circumstances, for that is your will for us in Christ Jesus. These things we pray now in Jesus' name, amen. stand together as we sing our closing songs this morning. And Jesus, we just want to thank you. Lord has been said so many times today that we are thankful people. May we carry that through the week to come. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for your word that has been presented. And we just ask that your blessing be upon us now as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now are dismissed. Mm -hmm.